Welcome, <clears throat> Crokey. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the launch of Crafting Compassionate Cultures. It's been a long time coming. Um, to say I'm nervous um, is an underestimation um, simply because this, yeah, it, this has been in the making for a very, very long time, say for the last two years. So I just want to say hello to people. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I know your time is precious. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joseph. Thank you. I know that means good luck. Joseph is one of our new trainers. Um, so say hi to Joseph. And yeah, that's just a reminder to say before, I'm just talking to give people an opportunity to join, right? So um, just to say that you can comment um, using the comment box. The comments won't be posted uh, to LinkedIn, but they will show up on this live stream and uh, providing they're decent. <laughs> uh, hey, Shabnan. Um, then obviously I will, I will show them um, on the screen. So it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Shabnam. So this will last approximately 30 minutes, but what you'll see throughout the presentation is our email address at the bottom of the screen. So if you've got to go, make sure you take a, a, a note of the email address um, because then that way you can stay in touch. But either way, you, you we're connected on LinkedIn, right? So you can also send messages through LinkedIn. So I think that's it. I think we should just go for it. Um, just because I'm very aware that uh, time is going. And you have to forgive me, this is a new platform for me. I'm not used to um, doing this live. So what am I talking about? I, I am used to doing this live. I've done it for the last three three weeks, but it's still quite new to me. So um, live, on, live on LinkedIn. Right, here we go. So this is the launch. So what's coming up? Um, first, I'll, I'll do a quick introduction to who I am and who Strawberry Words, or what Strawberry Words is, who we are. Then, I'll, obviously, I'll give the essential information on what you came here for, which is an overview of our online learning hub, Crafting Compassionate Cultures. And by the way, this is being recorded, um, but you get to ask me questions at the end. So if you want to ask questions, yeah, make sure you stay to the very end. Um, Crafting Compassionate Cultures, the overview. Then we have uh, another of our practitioners joining us. Uh, I think I can take that off the screen now. Yeah, there we go. I have another practitioner joining us, uh, Sipo Enlovu, who is delivering one of our, uh, just a tiny mini les lesson from our Thriving in the Face of Discrimination um, course, which will be in the hub. So you'll just get an idea of how we deliver uh, our training sessions. And then uh, there'll be a bit of a, an aspect to this and that I'll deliver a quick cultural awareness quiz it's just really quick <laughs> there's like three questions and and then you get a chance to ask questions okay so I think we should just again move on so if as I'm going through this you have any thoughts or questions feel free to pop those in the comment box and as I mentioned, if you've got to go, you can see the email on each and every slide, uh, the email address. So make a note of that and um, get in touch with us afterwards. So let me give you a brief introduction to Strawberry Words and myself. So I am Rebecca Hemmings. I am the director of Strawberry Words. And Strawberry Words began um, in 1999. I'll, no, I'll, I'll jump to that in a second. But to show you, tell you who's on screen, on the top left-hand cor corner, you have um, Tempilia. And then to the right of her is Sipo, who you will see today. Um, Joseph, who's just um, given me his, his good luck um, symbols. Thank you. Um, and then myself on the bottom right hand side. So I, I work with a team of facilitators and I have also um, I work with administrators. So, um, yeah, the Strawberry Words started in 1999. So when I finished university and it really was born out of a need to want to let people know that we're good people really because they you know as a young person i just kept remembering seeing lots of negative things lots of negative stories about black people um and i, I just felt it was wrong because i knew that that's that's not who we were it wasn't, a, it wasn't a fair representation so we actually started as a theater in education company we'd work in schools and we would deliver workshops and performances to children that then grew into cultural awareness training for teachers but we couldn't really use the r word um we could talk about discrimination very generally but we certainly couldn't talk about racism um and then fast forward to 2016 i wrote a a blog which was it, it was taken up by um it was taken up by yes it's definitely being recorded joseph so um 
arts professional magazine who posted it and this blog went viral it was about the lack of diversity um within the the um the arts industry that went viral and so all of a sudden uh, we were being asked to be on panels to deliver workshops and talk to talk about diversity but again still race was a hot button topic and people weren't really to discuss it so to be very honest with you after a while I kind of thought you know what um, this is too much of a struggle to talk about race. Like, I don't want to have an argument with anybody. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, but I just want everyone to just understand. And um, So I just thought after a while, you know, um, it's not worth all this hassle. So, you know, we would do our projects, but quite quietly, and we wouldn't talk about race. Well, 2020 came along, and all of a sudden I started getting all these emails Oh, Rebecca, do you remember when your company used to come in and deliver those cultural awareness training sessions? Can you come in and talk about race? I'm like, what? what? Really? You want to talk about race? Oh, OK, then. And so we um, what happened in 2020 is that we delivered a um, an online webinar on core time to talk about race, which is now the title of one of our courses. And we were just the, the you know, inundated with people who wanted to come. Um, we were meant to run them every month. After two months, I had to stop running them because we just had so much work. And so that's kind of where we are really now. We're three years on and we're still um, in demand having conversations, not only about race now, but about diversity and inclusion. Okay, so that's just a bit of an introduction to us. Um, I'll hear some photos uh, just to give you a reflection of the kind of things we've been doing over the years. And then um, here are a few of the clients that we work with. So um, what's great is that we have a long-standing relationship with a lot of the organizations that we work with. So we regularly work with the University of Birmingham, uh, the University of Cambridge. They, you know, the, For a lot of the universities, the conversation is around microaggressions. And so we don't just work with the students, we also work with staff. And staff have been taking, so the medical school, for instance, the last year they've been taking our microaggressions course so it's useful for you, for you to know that what we've had up until this point are standalone courses online so just the online stuff now i'm referring to we've had our standalone courses which which organizations could buy um but this now crafting compassionate cultures it is it is a hub where all that learning will be put into one place so again this is just an example of some of the organizations and we still work with birmingham um hippodrome so we're at the point where um, you want to know a bit more about crafting compassionate culture. So this is it. Um, <clears throat> and I hope all works well, because as, as I said, this is quite a new platform to me, but I'm about to show you a video. It's a launch video for crafting compassionate cultures. There is no audio other than music on this. Um, so if listening to this is, is proves problematic, don't worry. I will go over the detail afterwards. So. Uh, let's hope this.
Okay, so um, that is Crafting Compassionate Cultures. Let me give you a bit more detail. Oh, I should have put that on first. I didn't. Right, so move on. So what is our big idea? So we believe that employees and leaders need to learn, digest and reflect to create lasting change to help develop anti-racist, diverse and inclusive and kinder workplaces. Um, so we design crafting compassionate cultures to host flexible, meaningful and enduring learning options for the workplace. What does all that mean? Basically, um, you know, we want to see change. That's why we exist. We, we exist to help marginalized people thrive. So how do we how can we continue to do that now? Um, yes, it's great having face to face training and that does have a place. But what we want to be able to do is to have a long lasting impact. And so we believe the way in which to do that is to um, put all our learning in one place where people have the time to go through the material, material over the, the uh, the course of a year or perhaps longer where they can continue to add to that learning and not feel that pressure of having to be there on the day and then get caught up in everyday life okay so um crafting compassionate cultures um th the contents are these so currently and, it, and it's growing so this is just at the beginning right so we have our cpd accredited courses uh time to talk about race so that's an introduction to anti-racism. And to be honest, I'd say that's the, that course, we do that face to face as well. We, I'd say eight out of our, all our training sessions are around time to talk about race. We also have understanding microaggressions of subtle racism. And that was born out of when we did the section on microaggressions in the time to talk about race course, people would find the microaggressions part the most interesting part because we hardly discuss them in society. And so um, a course was created then to really break down not only what we mean by microaggressions by showing lots of examples, but also um, to share um, how do you deal with difficult conversations when microaggressions come up? How do you manage that as, as someone who's on the receiving end and also somebody who might have said or done something that is a microaggression? So that's what that's about. And as I said, they're CPD accredited. We have new courses coming on board. Number one, the introduction to diversity. Uh, and that's realizing that not everybody's ready for the conversation about race. Not everybody, um, yeah, they're not. Um, and sometimes people need to be eased into it. Sometimes people just need a general understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then thriving in the face of discrimination. Um, again, that's another new course coming up and you're going to see a, a sample of that in a moment um, when CPO joins us. Um, and so what that is, is, um, you know, it's a, it's a course I, I wrote because I, you know, as much as we do all this work, which is anti-discrimination type work, it's realizing that, you know, it took a long time for these systems to be created and it's going to take a long time to dismantle them. So what do we do as marginalized people in the meanwhile? So this is created for people of all protected characteristics of all marginalized identities. It's saying, look, um, acknowledging that, you know, work has been done to dismantle the systems, but in the meanwhile, how do you take care of yourself? In fact, not, not only how do you take care of yourself, how can you thrive, okay? Um, so that's what that's about. Then we have a library of resources, including templates, quizzes, reading materials and worksheets, um, and also bite-sized learning videos, a live uh, monthly Q&A session, and obviously a community of like-minded people. So what I'm gonna to show to you now is just an overview of what it looks like inside the platform cultures the platform so we start at home here where on this page is basically the dashboard you can see everything that's been happening and uh, obviously with the latest at the top if you quickly just want to get on and study you can just go into courses click on the bite-sized learning video so as well as the full courses we also have tiny bite-sized videos and they're usually based on um, things that people have asked so you can see um copies of those things of those videos here i won't press on it but yeah you get the idea okay and then we want you initially want people to start here so they know how to navigate the platform there's a whole area on how to do that uh, there's information on how to download the um the hub so the hub the um app um, because you can get it as an app, which is really convenient. You can say hello to everybody in the membership group and you can also access the full courses and it shows you how to do that. You click 
on the link and you navigate to the course. This will take you straight to the Strawberry Words website. So that's where the courses are held and you can go into the full course. And I won't go into all of this now, but it's just to show you that's, you know, you can go straight to and study the full courses there. Uh, you can attend live sessions. So these will happen on a monthly basis. Uh, and if you've missed one, because uh, you've got all the dates here, and if you've missed one, you can just go to the past, click on any one of those, and you can see um, the session there. Okay. And then you can ask questions, or we might ask questions of the membership right there. And any information you're seeing in here is is from the beta test. Okay, uh, the bite sized learning is also in this in this space. Uh, resources so we will pop things in here. So there's our reading list in there, anti racism reading list. So anything in, of interest you've seen online will pop in there as well. Um, there are also news. There's news and updates. We'll pop that there and people will also receive um, from time to time emails on what's come up, depending on what, what it is. Um, there's a how to section, how to access past recordings. You know, that's there, for instance, navigating, uh, crafting compassionate cultures on your phone. We've added a new session, which is about um, reporting wins. So we'll see how that goes. I've put something in there today and then challenges. So this is where, you know, we really want to get that engagement. So, for instance, we had a quiz and that proved really popular um, with our um, members. So that's just a quick overview of Crafting Compassionate Cultures, the uh, online hub. Okay, so um, that's a quick overview as to, as to the contents. Again, I should have shown you that earlier. Um, but we did a beta test earlier this year for two months with four organisations, um, Coventry City Council, Birmingham Hippodrome, Staffordshire Youth Offending and Osborne Clark Lawyers. And they tested this. So we had about 40 people on there. And so they gave us feedback because we wanted to know that this could work before really going out there live and saying, you know, invest in this. You know, we think this is great for your organisations. We needed to know that it was. So the feedback, the, some of the constructive feedback we received was that people wanted a simpler process. Like, you know, there's a lot of information in this initially. So we've reduced that and we've provided guidance for, for people um, in terms of how they get through the material. Um, fewer live events, people said. So what we were doing initially was having an event every week because in, in my head, I just thought, you know what? People just want to ask questions and give them lots of opportunity, but to, uh, lots of opportunity to ask questions. Um, but the feedback was actually, you know, we don't need it so regularly because number one, we're busy. Number two, we want time to formulate our questions and to really come with, come and get um value from the sessions. And I will say that those sessions were really valuable and, and people can go back and watch those sessions, as I mentioned in the video. And that's also valuable because you can learn from the questions, some of the questions that other people ask. And then they also said um, they wanted a clearer navigation process. So just a, a nice, easy way of going through all the material. So a video and, and some written information has been created on that. Um, some of the positive um, responses to the material were some of these. Oh, I enjoy the educational videos. They were they were easy to understand and interesting to follow. I also really like the short tests at the end of each lesson. So yeah, it, with the CPD accredited courses, we make sure you know, we had to make sure that learning was taking place. So what we've done is at the end of each module, we've put a quiz uh, or a test, if you like, and you can't move on to the next module until you get the answers correct. So you can take the the quest the, the multiple choice questions. Um, test, sorry, as much as you like, but you have to pass them in order to move on. And that's proved really um, positive. Um, the content of the modules are important to create inclusive cultures and make everyone aware of their own biases and reflect on their own uh, behavior. And this person at the end has said, the entire nation is, de is in desperate need of crafting compassionate cultures in almost every facet of life. I agree. There is too much frustration, hate and misery in our world today, but here in the UK, we can do something about it. And that's what we want you to, to do. We want each and every person to feel as though um, they, they can be a part of change, whether it's minute change or whether it's part of um, um, dismantling systems. Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, the mini lesson delivered by um, our trainer Sipo Enlovu. I'm going to add him to the stage. Hey Sipo. Hello, hello. Good afternoon all. Hello. Good, 
Yes. So as I said, before I hand over to Seapol, um, if you do need to leave, um, the email address is at the bottom of most of the slides. I can't see it on this one, but it is at the bottom of most slides. Do take a note of that. This is being recorded, so you can watch it back on the page. OK, so just as an introduction, as I mentioned earlier, Thriving in the Face of Discrimination is one of the courses that will be in the hub. And it's a new one. Um, and it, again, it's just based on the fact that knowing that these systems exist that discriminate against um, people, employees, people, students, whoever, um, what can you do personally to make sure you feel well? And so this is just a mini, mini lesson from that. Sipo, over to you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And that's a, a, a brilliant way, really, of putting it forward, because, of course, we, we understand that many of these circumstances can often feel so much bigger than ourselves. And so when actually addressing them, it can feel like you, you have to put yourself um, behind the, the problem. But yes, um, when talking about thriving in the face of discrimination, it's acknowledging that it has to be dealt with, and that you have to express your feelings. Um, and so I'll, I'll just talk um, us all through what um, the crafting and compassionate cultures, um, and as part of Strawberry Words, what we would like to offer to you. Um, and as Rebecca said, my name is C for Eric and Jovel, and I am an associate trainer for Strawberry Words. All right. <laughs> So when responding in the moment of, um, of a discriminatory incident, we understand that, um, of course, it's, it's a microaggression and, and really and truly any form of discrimination, it can be really, really difficult to process it, especially within that moment. Um, and so what we, we want to acknowledge is that even though you may be taken by surprise going into a type of flight or fight or even a freeze mode, it's making space to actually think about how you are going to act beforehand. Um, so we'd like to actually offer you some helpful tips just to prepare you ahead of such, of such incidences. So when it comes to actually responding in the moment to these discriminatory incidents, we have a few suggestions for you um, as, as to what you can do. So these three are to express your feelings and then take care of yourself, or you can take care of yourself and then express your feelings, or simply take care of yourself. Now, these, of course, all look and sound very, very different. And you might be able to imagine the type of um, circumstance or context you may find yourself where an incident has taken place. So this could be within a professional environment um, alongside a colleague, or you could even be um, within a, um, an institutional, an educational institutional um, environment where an incident has taken place and it's caught you by surprise. Um, and there's, there's absolutely multiple ways about how you can address those. So just to elaborate on uh, a few of these approaches, Let's take a look at some examples um, of each. So when thinking about um, expressing your feelings and then taking care of yourself, let's imagine that you are a young person who has just been shouted at by an older colleague at your work establishment. Your first step is to take a big breath. This allows the blood to stay in your prefrontal cortex. So many of us will already know, it's the thinking part of your brain. And this is helpful to not rush to the emotional part of the brain, which is likely to, of course, lead to irrational behavior. Then you express your feelings calmly. And you might say, it is not okay to shout at me. And at that point, you make your exit, you phone or, 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 or your voice note a friend, and you allow those feelings to flow through your body. But you've now taken control of that particular incident by expressing your feelings and then going ahead to take the steps of taking care of yourself. Let's have a look at the, 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 the next example. So you take care of yourself and then you express your feelings. So because we are, of course, all human beings and you know, um, it's very, very different, difficult to rationalize our emotional responses, um, but this is um, something you can do. We, we actually appreciate that because these emotions can overwhelm us 
um, in a, you might find yourself in a situation where you will seek support or you might look for a space where you can express your feelings. Um, so this might look like a quiet room. This might be a cushion even where you can just let go of all of those um, emotions or something else which might help you. Um, myself, as someone who loves words and writing, um, I absolutely have to go towards a notepad and just journal and write everything out. And so when you do that first and you're just taking care of yourself, letting go of a lot of that, that, that tension um, and, and letting it go th through, through your whole body before we're responding. Um, and once you've tended to those needs, then you know confidently and comfortably that you can address the situation and knowing that um, none of the other um, emotional aspects will, will come out in that, in that particular scenario. And finally, to talk about simply taking care of yourself. So we've gone through the, the other two, and this is our final um, offer to you. Sometimes we absolutely know that the best and only thing that you can do to take care of yourself means exiting that very challenging environment absolutely immediately. Um, you, you are not obliged to stay in these situations. Um, and I, I know we all know this, and often it can be helpful to, to be reminded that you do not need to stay in a challenging environment. Therefore, seek in a safe space to allow yourself to process those feelings. It could be that you actually are afraid of, of saying something which will make the situation worse um, or acting out in, in, in a manner towards another person. Um, and so in these moments, it's very, very, very important that you actually prioritize being safe and recovering. And this is because you have to come first in these environments. Um, now, we'd absolutely love to leave you with a quote which speaks to the importance of doing something over nothing. Um, this is by Dahlia Kinsey, um, from Decolonizing Wellness in 2002. Suppressing your emotions is not a health promoting behavior. Living with this level of fear and anxiety adds to baseline stress levels and undermines the body. And that is everything I wanted to say on thriving in the face of discrimination. Rebecca, you're doing a brilliant job. I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, CPO. You are amazing as usual. Can you see why we utilize the services of CPO? You just, you know, he he gets it. You know, um, you know what's really important is that all practitioners not only do they have to have the knowledge um, of discrimination and anti-racism, um, but they also have to un un be ha have a compassionate nature, and and you certainly have that. So thank you, CPO. Okay, I'm going to continue because again, I'm very aware that people have uh, lunches. So I'm going to get straight to the costing. Okay, so um, as you can see here, the costing is based on the size of the organization. Um, there is an annual access fee and there is a cost per seat. So at the moment, we do have an offer that the, the seat price is, re is reduced, half price. It's half, half price for most of them. Um, so say, for instance, you have 15 employees. Um, just one second. There we go. Take the pressure of CPO. Um, so, um, as you can see, um, yeah. So, if you've got 15 employees, you, you'll be in the one to 20 categories. The annual access fee is two thousand pounds. The cost per seat normally, so the per seat just means per person, would normally be eighty pounds. Currently, it's forty pounds uh, per person. OK, so uh, let's say you have 10 people in your organization, you'd pay the two thousand uh, pounds. And at the moment, you'd only pay four hundred pounds per person as opposed to eight hundred pounds. And there's no obligation to continue this annually. You know, you can cancel at any time, as they say. But once you have access, you always have access for one year. OK, and so this information is on our website. So feel free to look at that. Um, as and when needed. And again, if you've got to leave, the email address is on the bottom of the page. Feel free to get in touch. So it's quiz time. We're nearly at the end. So after the quiz, there's q and if people do want to ask questions. Um, so all I'd like you to do, really, because quizzes are something we've used quite a lot over the years, and they're fun, and they're an interesting, engaging way to learn, right? So I've only got three questions, and it's a cultural awareness quiz. So I'd like you, I can see there are 10 people in the room. Um, I'd like you just to put your answer in the, the chat box, and it can't be on LinkedIn, because we won't see any comments on LinkedIn. It must be 
on um, this this live video. Okay, and then once you've once we've gone to the three questions, I'll go through the answers. Okay, so are you ready? Here we go. First question. How many islands are in the Caribbean? There's quite a few Caribbean people in the UK, right? So let's get more, get, let's get more knowledgeable about where uh, this group of people come from. So is, are there A, 115? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> so I was just put up, uh, Sipo says, I have to admit, I've been looking forward to the quiz, quiz time. Uh, yeah, so how many islands are in the Caribbean? Is it A, 115, B, 76, C, 19, or D, 10. So if you can pop your answer in the chat box, don't worry, there's no shame in getting it wrong, okay? Because the great thing about this is I'm gonna give you the answers. And so even if you do get it um, not so right, um, then um, you'll learn, you will learn, right? Okay, so if I can see something's happening, but I can't see all the comments. So if you please do put pop your comments into the chat box. That would be great. Ah, there we go. I've got a new comment there. Okay, so Fiona says 19. Any more for any more? How many islands are in the Caribbean? Ah, here they're all coming now. Oh, I think there might be a delay on this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Right. So there we go. So um, I've popped up a few of those. We've got 115, 76, 19. So there's no consensus on that. So um, we'll come back to that. We'll find out shortly. Thank you very much for your responses, everybody. Okay, number two. Um, what do you think are the two most common misconceptions of Latvian people in England? Why do we know this information? Well, we did a project with the Latvian community in Peterborough and we learned lots ourselves, so we put it into a quiz. So uh, two, what are the two most common misceptions of Latvian people in England? A, that they speak Russian. So you can put like the, the letters, you don't have to write the whole thing out. So you can put like A and C or B and D or whatever. Um, so A, they speak Russian. B, they are they are of gypsy origin. C, they are Polish. Or D, it's always cold in Latvia. Okay. So again, I'm learning that there is a delay on this, but you can pop them in anyway. And as your answers come up, I'll put them on screen. So what do you think are the two most common? Uh, the, are two of the common misconceptions of Latvian people in England. A, they speak Russian. B, they are of gypsy origin. Uh, C, they are Polish. And D, it's always cold. So remember, it's two of them that you're wanting to put on there. Okay, yep, they're all coming in now. Okay, here we go. So there's quite a few of you um, are going for D. But remember, there's, there's two answers on that one. Yeah, okay, so Claudette says C and D. We will find out. Okay, um... Let's move on to our last question. What do you call someone from Somalia? Is it A, a Somali? Oh, thank you, Anita. Uh, this is going for the, this for the last one. You say C and D. We'll, we'll, we'll find out shortly. So yeah, go back to this one. So what do you call someone from Somalia? Is it A, a Somali, B, a Somalian, or C, a Somai? Okay, so what do you call someone from Somalia? A, a Somali, B, a Somalian, or C, a, sum, a summer. And I'll tell you why I know this, um, because once I was at a conference and this woman got up and spoke, at who's who's from Somalia, and, and she said, this is what we're called. Oh, I'll give you a clue there. It might be, that might have been a clue. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so, ooh, Joseph, oh, that's the last one, I think, uh, for Joseph. Fiona says B, a Somalian. Anita says B. We're going to find out the answer shortly. Any more for any more? What do you call someone from Somalia? Is it A, Somali, B, a Somalian, or C, a Somai? Uh, most of you are going for B. Uh, Joseph is going for A. Any more for any more? I think that's it, because we're going to come to a close now. So I'm going to give you the answers, okay? Are you ready? Ah, oh, here we go. A few more. Uh, seven says B. And, oops, hold on. And Shabnan says A. So let's find out. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you all the answers at once for time's sake. So the answers. There are 115 islands in the Caribbean. When I discovered this, which wasn't that long ago, I was shocked. I didn't know there were so many islands in the Caribbean. There's lots of small ones. Um, number two. Uh, the, the most common misconceptions of Latvian people. Uh, number one, that they speak Russian. And two, that they are Polish. Um, so did anyone get that one right? Did anyone get um, number one right? 
Let's see. Let's see. Um, 115. You said Shabnam, you got the one about the Caribbean, right? And Claudette, well done. And then I think it's A and C. So it was A and C for the second one. Did anyone? Yeah, no, I can't see anyone who got them on. So anyway, yeah, they speak Russian and they are Polish. And then three, a Somali, which I, I think only one person got this one because it was A. Um, oh, Joseph, well done. I'm very impressed. And Shabnan, well done. You both got that correct as well. Yeah, so I was in this conference and this, this woman of Somali heritage got up and said, you know, can you please use the correct name for us? We're not Somalians, which is the common term that's used. We are Somalis. And so ever since I heard that, you know, I learned that and it's something that um, I'll never forget. Um, so that is it. Um, it's, it's, it's over to you if there are any questions. I know this has been, you know, I'm so grateful for the people that have stayed. I, I know it's been a long session, particularly if you got lunch, but yeah, well done, Shabnam. <laughs> you got all three. Oh my goodness. So Shabnam got all three and she says, yippee. Um, yes, yep, me. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that's referring to, but I know that you definitely got at least one, if not two, if not three, right, Joseph, so well done. Um, so yeah, well done for, for those who took part in the quiz. Thank you. And again, that's just a reflection of how we teach you know we've got all the serious stuff but then we also have the lighter stuff that really engages you but that you're learning at the same time you know we've been doing this stuff for years so um yeah if there are any questions do pop those in the chat box now um otherwise i'll, I'll bring this to a close um i hope was that useful to you that that would be useful for me um to know if if this has been insightful um, I'm not saying, are you going to buy? I'm just asking, was it insightful? Um, Joseph says, thank you. Anita says, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Shabnam also says, thank you. All looks excellent. Thank you very much. As I said, a lot of hard work has gone into this platform. And you know, the plan is that uh, there'll be a lot more live sessions. So I'll give you some insight, actually, some exclusive information that um, we've revamped the podcast. The Coffin Anti-Racism podcast will be known as the uh, Compassionate Cultures podcast. And um, this will be live. Um, oh, that's good to know, Shabnam. We'll, we'll, we'll be, I'll be in touch. Um, um, so what we'll do, because I think a way of getting to the people is doing this, do, doing live LinkedIn events. Um, and so that will be done. Uh, right. Seven says, can I ask a question? Is there a minimum number of seats for the hub? No, because once you pay the annual fee, you can have as, as few or as many as you like. And that's what's beautiful about the the hub is that it offers that flexibility so it could be a financial reason why um there might only be five people initially on it but then later on in the year there are more people added or it could just be that you know you only want to include new people um who come to the organization to um to join so yeah there, there are no minimum seats um Claudette says, uh, no questions, Rebecca. However, this is fantastic. I love this. I will definitely be sharing this with clients, seeking the training, this training. Amazing work, Rebecca and the team. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudette. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, very insightful. Thank you, Claudette. And that is something that we we um, are also looking for, are people to speak to organisations about um, crafting compassionate cultures. We are looking for resellers. So Shabnan, hence the reason why I say I think um, it would be good uh, to have a conversation. Uh, Shabnam asks, have to go now. Looking forward to staying in touch. Love the name Strawberry Words. Would love to know how you came up with this. Yes, uh, I'll say. Um, well, because the average strawberry has over 200 seeds on it. And so we like to think that uh, with every intervention, with every conversation, with every workshop, uh, with every lesson, we're planting uh, seeds of growth, seeds of knowledge and seeds of development. And we communicate through words. So hence the reason um, why we call it Strawberry Words. A very common question. And I love answering it. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, Seven. And thank you so much, Joseph. And that's it. I'm going to bring it to an end now because I want, I want to have some lunch myself. But thank you. As I said, this has been recorded. And so if you want to share this, please do. Um, so as many people can learn about crafting compassionate cultures as possible. Thank you so much. And goodbye. <laughs>